Roller coaster and ride accidents are no joke. I've spent the last four years creating detailed analysis videos for over 20 of them. One thing that I've learned in this process is that finding out details and the facts of what really happened in ride accidents is a difficult process, filled with conflicting sources and gaps in information. This means that without extensive research, it's impossible to cover ride accidents accurately. And that's why I've always found videos like this one fascinating. Obviously, this is created just for clicks, but it's presenting itself as a factual source on ride accidents. So today, in a throwback to some of my oldest videos, we'll be taking a look at this video and seeing what they get right and what is told horribly wrong. Let's imagine you're on a roller coaster ride. The sun blinds your eyes, the wind is in your face, and you hear the other passengers' laughter. <laughs> awesome, right? When you fall, the adrenaline rushes through your blood, and you feel happy. But suddenly, instead of joyful laughter, there are shrieks of terror. Just now, right there before your eyes. I apologize, but like most of these videos, they are using clips from a certain infamous copyrighted movie with a scene of a roller coaster accident. So I replaced their footage with some of my own. A passenger sped out of their seat during a sharp turn and fell from a height of a few dozen meters. You don't believe this can happen? What if I tell you that much worse things have happened in amusement parks and the long history of their existence? On March 24, 2022, 14-year-old Tyree Sampson went with his football team on holiday to Icon Park in Orlando, USA. There, the boys decided to go for a ride on Orlando Freefall, the world's tallest freestanding drop tower which was 131 meters tall. But an ordinary day off turned into a tragedy. When the movable part of the ride got to the top of the tower and started falling, Tyree slipped out of his seat and hit the ground. The eighth grader died on the spot. According to the forensic expert report, the leading cause of Samson's death was a mistake on the part of a park employee as it turned out, the freefall ride operator had loosened the safety belt on Samson's seat. I know they're showing footage from lots of different rides, but honestly, I can't really fault them for that. It can be hard to find footage of these things that really convey the story you're trying to tell. What I do take issue with is the way this accident is being told. I've recently started work on the what really happened for this accident, and the investigation of the accident is actually still ongoing. However, the root cause of the accident has been discovered. It was an adjusted sensor by an unknown employee of Icon Park that allowed the ride to start with an over-the-shoulder restraint open significantly more than it was designed to be. This allowed the rider to slip through the restraint. The ride did not feature seat belts as claimed in this video. A full video covering this accident soon to come. After Samson's death, Orlando Freefall and an adjacent ride Orlando Slingshot were closed until further notice. The company Orlando Slingshot which had designed the ride, made a statement that proclaimed the company's decision to withdraw this model from production after the boy's death, and Icon Park supported this call. This is what I mean when I say that these accidents take so much time and effort to research, as simply skimming news articles can lead you to stating something like this. This ride was manufactured by the Austrian company Funtime. The ride model is still very much in production today, and this exact ride is actually up for sale for a new owner. Orlando Slingshot, otherwise known as the Slingshot Group, was the owner and operator of the ride. Though they may have had some connection to Funtime, they are not the same company. When Hackamer expressed the wish to go on a roller coaster ride at Darien Lake, park employees were unable to secure a safety belt on him. Because of this, the man was put in the first coach with the explanation that he would be able to hold onto the barrier in front of him with his hands. And because he had no safety belt, during one of the turns, the man was hurled out of the seat on the Ride of Steel coaster, which was moving at 80 kilometers per hour. This is another great misrepresentation of what really happened. The rider in question was seated into row 11 and was secured by use of the normal restraints provided. The rider was ejected on an airtime hill about halfway through the ride. I've made a complete what really happened on this accident that can be viewed here. And the ride was back in operation that same year. But sometimes, you don't even have to buy a roller coaster ride ticket to get a deadly injury. Just standing nearby can be enough. In 2015, 
A teenager was decapitated on a roller coaster ride after he jumped over some fences and entered a forbidden zone. This horrific accident happened at the Six Flags over Georgia Park. 17-year-old Asia LaShawn Ferguson from Springfield got over two two-meter-tall fences, ignoring the signs that warned of the area ahead being a dangerous forbidden zone. So I wouldn't exactly describe this as just standing near the ride, but let's continue. Most likely, the boy was trying to get his hat, which fell off his head while he was on a ride. But some witnesses say he wanted to prank the passengers of the ride by grabbing someone's foot when the coach would be passing over his head. I've also made a full What Really Happened video on this accident that can be viewed here. The reason for the guest going into the danger zone for the ride was determined to be that they were seeking to jump the line. Many news sources at the time made other assumptions before the accident investigation was completed, and that is what is probably leading to the creator of this video claiming this. The boy received a deadly blow almost immediately after getting under the roller coaster. The foot of one of the passengers who sat in a coach moving at 80 kilometers per hour hit the boy on the head. This blow immediately decapitated him. The police claimed the boy's death to be an accident. Six Flags decided to show respect to the Ferguson family by closing the roller coaster on the day of the tragedy. But the next day, the coaster continued to give rides to happy visitors of the park. This is also not true. The state ordered that even though the fencing and signage around the ride met ASTM standards, it would need to be updated with the words extreme danger being added to signs and barbed wire being added to the top of the fences. The ride remained closed for five days while these changes were put into place and the accident was investigated. But that wasn't the first accident at the Six Flags Network. Two years before, in 2013. Here we can see something revealing about this video's creation. The Batman accident occurred on June 28, 2008. The next accident, New Texas Giant, occurred on July 19, 2013. This is not two years before the Batman accident and is instead over five years after. I think this reveals something interesting about the channel that created this video. In my opinion, no person would make a mistake as obvious as this in a video that will reach over a million viewers. It's also interesting when looking at the rest of this creator's channel. They have several videos, all in the same format, with some getting millions of views and others just getting hundreds. The channel itself only has under 15,000 subscribers. Additionally, the channel art and description are extremely light and simple. In my opinion, I believe we're looking at an AI-generated YouTube channel. While that may make this video seem more insignificant, notice that 1.2 million people have watched this video. Rosie Esparza was torn apart while riding the Texas Giant roller coaster at Six Flags over Texas Amusement Park. Even before the beginning of the ride, the woman expressed concern over her safety belts after she got on the coaster. An operator assured her they were properly secured, and the roller coaster started its fatal journey. When the coach made a sharp turn, Esparza's safety belts loosened, and the woman was flung 23 meters into the air right before the eyes of her terrified daughter. Her partially torn body was found wrapped around a hinge on the roof of the Honky Tonk Tunnel. Most of this information is actually correct. However, the restraints in question were not seat belts. Instead, the ride featured a single T-bar style lap bar that had issues accommodating larger riders. For more information, check out the What Really Happened video I did on this accident right here. July 11, 2010. 21-year-old Lindsay Zeno visited Blue Bayou Water Park. Zeno got on a ride called Extreme Coaster, a roller coaster that had been in operation for about three years. Minutes into her ride, the girl fell from a height of nine meters and eventually died from trauma sustained. We weren't sure exactly what caused the accident. It could have happened due to a faulty safety belt mechanism. One of the witnesses claims he saw Zeno try to secure her safety belt when the coach made a sharp turn and flung her into the air. Louisiana State Fire Marshal Butch Browning sent inspectors from his department to check the roller coaster. According to him, all of the mechanical parts of the coaster were in their place and without fault. Nevertheless, after the accident, the ride was closed forever. Here I gotta give credit to our AI friend, as I actually had no idea this accident ever occurred. After a quick Google search, it turns out that they got this one pretty much correct. Shockingly, the official investigation failed to find any cause for the accident. 
The only thing this video gets wrong is that the ride actually reopened after the accident and continued operating till 2017. It has since been relocated and is still operating today. Perhaps this can be a topic for a future what really happened. Now the video does continue after this, but honestly there's not much more to say. I think it's pretty obvious that this video and videos like it exist just to get clicks. The amount of research it takes to get information about ride accidents correct is just not feasible to do for these top 10 channels, even with the help of AI. I know thousands of more videos like this exist, and so I don't plan to cover these in this series, but who knows what could happen. As a reminder, there's a link in the description for you to submit videos that you think should be reacted to in this series. Keep in mind that this series is open to anything theme park related, not just rides and roller coasters. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.